Blink. There we go. So you yes, last week you guys have talked. Of, we now we know how to move the robot. We know how to get it in position. We know that these are these six joints that can move around based upon what you do on a teach pendant. We know that there's a couple of different ways of jogging the robot with a joint, joint and a joint coordinate system, which which just moves each uh, axis independently based upon degrees. We also know there's a world coordinate system which moves the robot based upon an origin in the middle of basically in the middle of the robot. That keeps, and if you found it, moving that in the world is a little bit easier because it keeps the tool center points in place, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Make sense so far? Um, you guys booted up the robot. You were able to play around with it. You got to know the wonder. But last week, as you were playing around, you kept encountering things like DCS error, right? And you guys are wondering, how do I clear out this stupid thing? Because I can't move the robot back and it keeps giving me errors. Well, today we're going to talk about how to clear out those errors and talk about some of the errors that you might encounter. Because I don't care who you are, there will come a time when ro where your robot will get into a, a situation of errors. Okay? And so these are some of the errors that we're going to talk about, how to recover, the singularity issue. I kind of touched on that last week, but I want to talk about it more because you might not have encountered it uh, last week how to cover uh, DCS faults, because you guys experienced that in spades last week, as well as uh, what a chain uh, failure detection error is. So, errors can arise for multiple reasons. One, it could be a hardware issue. It's quite frankly, a hardware issue. One of the most, not common ones, but ones you might experience is, is batteries going dead. That's a hardware issue, not a software issue. It's not programming, it's some physical component with that. Sometimes a switch goes bad. It happens. So this the FANUC system is set up to do diagnostics on things to, to know if there's a hardware issue that goes bad sometimes or something isn't acting like it should. Um, so a hardware issue is, is like a broken cable or a tool's not connected right, something like that. Uh, software issues, that's because uh, incorrect programming. May, maybe someone came in on third and started mashing buttons because they want to show off to the three-year-old that hey, look, I can, daddy can probe a robot, and you know, you know, kids, they can do amazing things. They can call 911 when the phone's locked. You know, and then maybe they just did something. Uh, someone did something to mess up the program, and you try to run a program, and error happens. Some programs, like when you make a circle or or make an arc of some type, if you don't program it right, you're going to get a motion error. So sometimes, uh, software, the software is 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 the issue. And lastly, an external error. That's, it. That's the safety errors that you may count, an e-stop in the line. So a lot of time robots are put in a line of other things that, that will correspond, you know, like our mechatronic setup. You know, if I open the safety gate in our mechatronic setup on the robot assembly setup, everything stops. That's an external error because it's, it's, it's wired in uh, extern externally. Um, and a lot of these can just be cleared by the reset button. So if you notice on, on the teach pendant, kind of right above the numbers, there's a little reset button that you can press, and it just kind of clear, clears it out before you go forward. Make sense so far? Okay. A lot of you guys found this is helpful last week, is there's a way to actually display the actual alarm. And this is great, because if you're troubleshooting, there's a little, set, little setup there, and it says, here's the alarm, you know, and you would hit the you would hit the uh, menu button and press the alarm code and all the, the all the alarm would show up and some of you guys actually press the diagnostic button to see what the heck it was and so there's a lot of good help right there it's for you to help figure out w what to do in these cases now um, what helps too is fanic with all the with all the stuff that we provide that they provide us have e-documents with a whole list of alarm codes that you can have a hard copy of. So we'll talk about this a little bit more, but you can see the countless amount of alarms just going here on the side with different prefixes and all of them mean certain things. Okay? We'll talk about this more in a second, but I want to just say that that this this feature of being able to know what alarms you got, that's a good thing because there are tons of alarms and you may not experience, you may be operating something and all suddenly out of the blue, an alarm you've never seen before pops up. It will happen, but it's all right, with this, there's, there's things set up. Again, you guys know how to get to the air, uh, uh, alarm setup just by hitting the menu button and pressing alarm, and you'll see a list like this. 
it will always have like a three, a four digit prefix and a three digit, a three digit code of some type. Kind of like our classes. You know, this is ADMF 106. It has a four digit prefix because that's the advanced manufacturing program with a class code. Same thing, an alarm code and a class, you know, and a and a certain type of, of code to give you a little bit more with a description. You know, power cell, de uh, power cell uh, detected, you know, or power failure detected. Um, I'm trying to say if I focus on it a little bit more. Teach pendant e stop engage. You know, and some of them are just stuff that you do. You let go of the dead man switch, you, you hit the e stop. But, they, but the system records all that because it, you, know, it can, it, you can get a history of alarm. So if you keep getting a, an alarm that takes place over and over again, you get a history of it. And so that you can clearly diagnose problems if need be. Um, if you press F1, you can view the motion errors and uh, applica you know, application specific errors. So F5, the detail screen will give you also a little bit more of a detail and hit previous to back out. But oftentimes to remove all error messages, you know, press, sh hold, press and hold shift, press and hold shift, and hit the F4 key, uh, the soft key on the teach pendant. Now, you guys know that technically every time you release that dead man switch, you have to, you, you, you have to clear the error by hitting reset. Now on both robots though, I enable the system variable to say that the dead man switch will automatically reset when you press it again. It makes things a little bit easier. It is an option that we can do. I can show you how to get there maybe later when we talk about system variables. But you know, I have now, when you, when you release an e-stop, it will denote that the e-stop is released as, a, as an error. But when you press in the e-stop, the, the dead man to the middle position, it'll automatically clear it out. You don't have to hit reset and then clear. You know, I'm saving that 0 .001 seconds. It'll go a long way. So, um, but again, by default, when you release the dead man, press it again, you must press reset, default, and then press the dead man again. See, and it can get, you're in a hurry, if you don't hit that reset first, and then that, that's why I kind of reset, uh, made that, that parameter or that, that system variable automatic reset makes life a little bit easier. But no, if you go to a, a, a FANUC out in the field, that that's the case. I don't, so we make things easier, but it could be set, established that you have to hit reset and then the dead man out in the field if you go somewhere that has FANUC ro robots that hasn't had that disabled. And if you want to talk with your boss and then and say, hey, this is a better thing to disable it, that's a conversation with them. But I'm saying that's default in the field. Make sense? Okay. So far, any questions? Everyone's favorite, DC, uh, D, uh, the DCS. As we talk about this dual check safety, it ma ma uh, monitors the uh, speed and position of the robot, makes sure it's not coming into contact with anything. You know, you can actually pull this up on the controller, what the DCS looks like. There's a way to do that uh, with our type of teach pendant to be able to pull that up and see what things look like in a four dimensional space. We'll get, maybe get to that in a, uh, eventually. But when you have a DCS there, so you're going around and all of a sudden you don't see that your robot rotates too far and gets into that DCS zone and it, it causes a DCS error. To reset it, you have to let go of everything I would, you know, special, let go, let go of everything. You may, uh, you know, let go of everything. You know, again, re-engage re -engage the dead man. And then hold down, hold down shift and keep holding it. Reach over, hit the reset button, keep holding shift. The big thing is keep holding shift. And then you jog the robot out of danger. So when you're moving, it's important to know how you're moving and what way you're moving because if you know that you were pressing, the blast button you were pressing was Z plus, and it got you into danger, what button should you press to get out of danger to get out of that DCS error? Z minus. Z minus. So, so when you jump, I know you can get in this tunnel vision of like, okay, what do I, you know, how do I get out of this? And you guys are experiencing that last week because you're new to jogging. And so that moment you have to stop and think, okay, I was rotating 
I was rotating the third joint, I was rotating my fourth joint, and that was the last thing I was moving, and that caused a DCS error. So the way to get out of it is go back out of that position. So when you're, when you're jogging, don't become a mindless automaton and just pushing buttons like it's a video game. You have to have some recognition of what you're doing so that if you encounter a DCS error, you can go back. But the biggest thing is, and this is the big thing, because we want to let go of stuff. So once we hit that shift reset, we let go. But the system, because when you hit the shift, it, it, it kind of sends a signal to the system saying, I can move. And once you lift off that shift, it goes back into the DCS error state. So when you hit the shift reset, and it'll go then green up at the top, you're good to go, move it out. And then don't get to that position again. Today when we talk about tool center pointing and, and user frames, um, there could be a, a point in which you get a DCS error. What we, it, so that, that is fun and we can talk about that. Whenever you say a shift and a key, you mean at the same time? Right? Yes. So holding down shift and then hit reset. That's and then saying. finger off reset and keep holding down shift while keeping the dead man enabled. And so. So th that's the big thing. Press and hold the shift key and keep it held. You, and you'll get used to this after, once you do it, so do it a little bit. This will become, this next thing will come important more when we start doing programming. Um, if you're in a job and running a job, you can't just go to another job and get that job started. Because it, it confuses, because that job could be have a different set of programming parameters. You know, it, 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 it's not like apples and apples. So what you got to tell the controller is, is you need to abort all jobs. So if you're testing a program and want to even go, you know, you need to abort all jobs. So you know, so uh, if a previous program was tested and the end statement of the program was not executed, didn't get all the way to the end, you may need to abort all programs in order to execute a different program. Um, you can't de delete a program if it's paused. You can't do a lot of things. So, so if you try to delete it, if it's still active, you can't. Be, the system is. In, you know, think of it this way: you can't tear down a room if someone's in it. You need to clear the room first. And so, the going to the function key, which is it, so to give you a, to for the function key. And I'm gonna switch over to our little uh, modeler. The function key is right here. So see that right here? If I click on that, the very first thing is the abort all. You're just going to get to know that. Function abort all. It's kind of when, and when you're doing entry level programming, if you just want to do that occasionally to make sure that you're not having some issues, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. You're saying, you know, okay, clear the room, you know. It's all right to do multiple times. Okay, and you'll get that, but that's that. This function key is right, right here on your teach pendant. Okay, and function, you know, hit, and then you hit the one or enter, and it boards all the programs. Cool. Is that going to set the robot back to like a starting position or something? No. Or no, it will, the robot will always stay in the position that it's currently in, unless commanded to by a program or the teach pendant. Yeah. So it's not gonna, you know, there may be some macro or something set up when you may sometimes, when boot up, it, you know, when starting from a cold start, it may you may set up something where it goes to a certain position, you know. But generally speaking, the way we have things set up here is the robot staying unless the program tells it to move or you tell it to move. Okay. Yep. So, so I'll switch back to the makes sense. Okay. And this is especially helpful if you have, and, and you'll see if you look, it's, well, it'll give you an error of something like INF, uh, I, INTF 105, and you see that at the top means a, a currently running program uh, something somewhere else. Okay. Did any of you guys see this last week? Singularity error? In joint, you wouldn't have experienced it. Because, the, because why? Is the computer doing any math? In a sing, is the computer doing any math? Enjoying. No, it's not. It's just it's 
it, it's just, you know, you move a joint this many degrees, move a joint this many degrees. It's really moving one thing at a time. It's pretty straightforward. It's not complicated. Talking about the grid coordinates, the XY grid and world. It's got to it's got to do a little math because it, here's your, and we'll talk about two center, tool center pointing in a little bit, but here's the point. And if I want to move it in a positive X direction, remember our, our right hand rule where the, where the tricked out gangsta, you know, where's our right hand rule. If I move it in the positive X, you know, I got to move two, a couple joints at one time to keep that point the same. And so it has to do some math. Where sometimes though, in that world coordinate system, it has infinite amount of possibilities to move something from, and so it's hard to calculate. And the most common of this is when joint four and joint six are kind of all in one straight line, because, and I, I will demonstrate this on, on the, in the robot controller here. Um, let me get it ready. This is, a, that should be about right. It has to be close. Um, and what will happen is it, you can't move anything. So let me see if I can't simulate this on our robot controller that I have here. So I'm going to switch over. We're okay. I'm going to switch over. Uh, right, there we go. So I have this robot here. It's quasi straight. I'm hoping this will simulate because I was doing something else. It's it's straight right here. If I try to jog, you know, keep my mind, holding down my dead man's enabled, holding down shift. I can do this on my keyboard. Should be in the world coordinate system. It's and you can see it's moving, but it may not be straight enough. Ah, there it is. I try to move it. I try to move it in the Z axis. If I take a look right here, it says M O T N 23 in singularity. Do you see that right there? So let me recreate it. If I do shift and I was trying to do my Z axis, or right now I'm trying to do Z plus, it won't let me. Do you see that on the controller? Because it's in singularity. How to fix that? I would switch over to the joint coordinate system and I would rotate the five axis, joint five, slightly up or down in one direction, kind of a five degree angle like this. And now if I go over to my coordinate plane, so you know, world coordinate plane, I should be able to do Z plus. See, look, now it's moving where before it wasn't. See that simple fix? And it keeps that tool center point the same. Make sense? Any questions? Wait, uh, just switch on the wrong RB1. There we go. Okay. And that's exactly what what is said. And you can see a demonstration on that slide right there what that looks like when you know five is 